Hi, Longmont. My name is Karen Stallard. I'm the membership director with the Longmont Area Chamber of Commerce. The Longmont Chamber has been working hard to support our local businesses and connect the community during this challenging time because we don't think that being physically distanced means that we can't still socially connect and support one another. So I'd like to tag in Jessica Wanasek, the Chamber Event Director, to tell you a little bit about what we've been up to. Hey everyone, so the Longmont Chamber of Commerce has been hosting daily Facebook Live events Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. over on our Chamber Facebook page. We are featuring a local business or a nonprofit while having fun interactive activities, giveaways, and just connecting with our community. We wanted to share the fun with you after the fact, so we are airing all of our episodes from last week with you here now so you can enjoy. And we hope that you see some familiar faces from around Longmont. And remember, if you ever want to see the live thing, just tune into the Chamber Facebook page at 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Or check out a themed list of businesses over on our Chamber website. www.longmontchamber.org forward slash Longmont is open. And find a business that you would like to support. Enjoy the show. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. We are back. We're back for another episode of our Tuesday's Tunes and Arts. We are going to just give it a second or two uh, to welcome everybody and let the audience come in. Come in, come in. We have a really exciting episode for you guys today. So uh, come in and get comfortable. Um, we're just going to give it another second or two. We see a few people popping in here. If you're here, let us know by commenting. It's hard for us to see you unless you're saying hello to us in the comments. So uh, go ahead and say hello, everybody. Give it just another second or two. <clears throat> like I said, uh, today is Tuesday's Tunes and Arts. Uh, my name is Jessica Wanasek. I'm the event director over at the Longmont Chamber of Commerce. Um, we are back for our second Tuesday Tunes and Arts, and we have a really um, great special guest with you today um, that I hope you're going to enjoy. I know I'm excited and ready to go for it, so uh, sit back and get comfortable. Um, again, let us know you're here. Comment. Say hello. Uh, if you have questions as we get going into uh, the live segment today, let us know in the comments, and we'll try and uh, answer those on air when we see them. So hi, Patty. Patty says, hello, I'm here. Hi, Patty. Glad to have you here. Uh, and just to let you guys know, too, uh, one lucky viewer who comments today, we're going to have a little bit of a quiz towards the end of today's live. So somebody is set to win a really cool prize that is being donated by um, our special guest today. So let us know you're here. Uh, pay attention because you never know what the question is going to be for um, the prize. So today is May 5th, also known as Cinco de Mayo, but it's also Giving Tuesday. Now, some of you might be asking, what the heck is Giving Tuesday and why do I care? Um, Giving Tuesday is normally the Tuesday that is after it follows Thanksgiving. <clears throat> and what it is, it's an annual day of giving to um, local nonprofits or charities of your choice. Um, but this year, because the situation is a little bit different, another Giving Day has been added to the calendar, and that's today. May 5th is Giving Tuesday. Um, you can go to any local nonprofit or charity, check their, their websites and Facebook pages out. Um, if you don't have funds that you can donate, you can also help support them by posting maybe one of your favorite pictures of um, a nonprofit that you've worked with or uh, one of your favorite charities. So show them some love by um, sharing some of those pictures on your social media as well to help them raise awareness today. Um, another real quick thing about Giving Tuesday is the Longmont Observer had a really great article on that today. So if you want to go check that out, uh, go to longmontobserver.org uh, and read all about the possible ways that you can support um, the Giving Tuesday today. So, oh, oh, hold, hold on one minute. So I'm getting something. We're getting actually some breaking news. Um, I am going to turn it over to, uh, hold on. Yeah, we have some exciting breaking news coming to us live. So I am actually going to turn this over to our uh, chamber membership director, uh, Karen Stallard. Let's see, Karen. Karen, are you coming in? 
Oh, there she is. Karen, what is happening? Hi there, Jessica. Thanks so much for beaming me in on such short notice. I just really had to bring this very relevant information to all of our viewers right at this moment, because yes, it is Giving Tuesday. And of course, the Chamber of Commerce here in Longmont has been working diligently to support not only our community, but especially our local businesses during this extremely challenging time. And we recognize more now than, more now than ever uh, that businesses need support. They need resources. They need the ability to pick up the phone and have an actual real life human, a Local, talk them through some of the challenging regulations and requirements for them as they navigate COVID-19. And we just want our members and the community to know that we are here to support them, that the Longmont Chamber is here to support you. And we have launched an exciting campaign. Other hand, this hand, nope, that hand, this one, nope, this way, it's this way. That <laughs> directions. Um, we have launched an exciting campaign known as officially the Member Helping Members Fund. This fund is supposed to be for individuals, members of the community, and even businesses that may be in a good enough financial situation to support a business that needs support right now. Because more now than ever, people really need that hand up um, to navigate these hard times. So the Member Helping Member Fund has launched. And to make it found, sound really nice, warm, and fuzzy, we've got Foxfeather here to tell you a little bit more about it. So, Foxfeather, take us away. Members, members helping members in the way. Resources, Resources provided every day. The Longmont family is here to stay. Members, members helping members. Members helping members is a must. Walmart is the city you can trust. We're in it with you, boom or bust. Members helping members. Brought to you by Fox Brother. Thanks, Longma. We love you. Love you. My goodness, and I'd say we love them too. Can we just say how amazing those ladies of Fox Feather are? I mean all the warm fuzzies. So this is just to remind everyone that we are here for you. And if you would like to support a fellow Longmont Chamber member or a business here in Longmont, go to uh, longmontchamber.org forward slash MHM for members helping members. That's it for me, Jessica. And I'm Karen Stallard, membership correspondent. And that's the way the Longmont roars. Thank you so much, Karen, for that breaking news. And we, uh, we hope to see you again soon with some other breaking news. My pleasure. Bye. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All kinds of breaking news and exciting things happening around Longmont and the Chamber today. So uh, go check that out. If you also want to see a list of businesses that we are featuring each day at 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, uh, right here on Facebook, go to uh, the Chamber Facebook website, which is www.longmontchamber.org forward slash Longmont is open. And you'll see a whole list of, of the businesses that are open in some way or another during this crazy time. So with that, and um, I would like to bring on our special guest today, and she is uh, with one of those businesses that uh, we would like to highlight as well as part of the Giving Tuesday and um, a very special nonprofit to all of our hearts in Longmont is our friend and um, executive director over at the Firehouse Arts Center in Longmont is Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Oh, hold on. We're having some technical difficulties there, Elaine. Try it again. Hi, Elaine. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. We just had some breaking news. Sorry to, to interrupt our, our live broadcast, but we had some breaking news happening around Longmont today, so we, we thought right, we would exciting. share. <laughs> so you are with Firehouse Arts Center in Longmont, right? Yes. Okay. So I have um, some questions because I, I love the building itself. I drive every time I drive by there, I just always want to stop and go take a peek inside. Um, can you tell us or tell the audience where you are located? We are located on 4th and Kaufman. Uh, so it's 667 4th Avenue, uh, right in downtown Longmont, um, inside the renovated uh, firehouse building. So it's actually an old firehouse. Love, <laughs> love it, love it. I love that building. Um, so, okay, how long have you guys been open for business? 
So the Firehouse Art Center has been around since 1986. Um, it was actually created as a collaboration between the Longmont Art Council, um, Council for the Arts, and some local artists, uh, some of which are still involved with the Firehouse. So since 1986, um, 10 years after that is when we put in the permanent gallery, uh, the classrooms, and um, we also have the studios that are upstairs. So um, I've actually been involved with the firehouse for 10 years, um, but I just came on as the executive director. Yeah, congratulations. So, um, it's been an interesting um, entry into uh, uh, being that part of the firehouse in this way. But um, but yes, it's the place where I first taught my, uh, it's uh, the place where I taught my first art class. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. That's cool. Well, I would like to officially welcome you to um, the <laughs> the Longmont Chamber and everybody in Longmont. This is Elaine. Say hello, Elaine. So if you want to stop by and say hello to Elaine and check out everything that the Firehouse is doing, um, it is, is it firehouseartscenter.org? It's firehouseart.org. Firehouseart.org. Okay. So make sure to stop on by there. You've got some exciting stuff going on. Um, so for those of maybe out there in, in watching land um, who have been possibly living under a rock <laughs> the last month and a half, can you share how you guys are running your operations during this time? Um, so the Firehouse Art Center is currently closed, um, but we have uh, tried to bring a lot of our offerings online. So we've been doing uh, virtual live stream Facebook classes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for the kiddos. Um, we usually have Saturday Art Experience, uh, which is Saturdays at the gallery, but since we are closed, we don't have those right now. Um, but we still wanted to offer classes um, and education to the community, so we've brought all of that online. Um, we also have been doing artist talks as well as gallery mm -hmm. walkthroughs. Um, and all of that is on our Facebook page, also on our YouTube channel. Uh, our instructor for Saturday Art Experience as well as Art Attack, uh, Mario, he has okay. also been posting classes onto YouTube and we are happy to be offering those both in English and in Spanish. Oh, very cool. Can you tell everybody what your uh, YouTube address, where they can find you over on YouTube? Um, actually, if you just search for the Firehouse Art Center, um, there's kind of like, there's two channels. Uh, one of them is not us, <laughs> but you'll, you'll see. And uh, also the link is on our Facebook page. Oh, very cool. Very yeah, cool. Well, I'm, I'm kind of seeing some of the comments coming in too. Kyle Mumford Ham says, the virtual art classes have, have been fun. Thanks, Elaine. Yay. Yeah, yeah awesome. and um, if you go to our Facebook page, you'll see uh, the kids have been sending in their art and we we post them too. So Aww. it's really super cute. And if you go there, make sure to like their pages because they do check to make sure, um, you know, people are liking their art. Oh, super cute. So all you people watching, get over there to their Facebook page and like those little kiddos artworks. I know they probably worked super hard on those. That's so cute. Um, well, okay, so we, every day, Elaine, we have been doing kind of a fun giveaway, some sort of, maybe it's a, a question or some way for the viewers to win a prize. Can you share um, or show us even what today's prize is? So today's prize is a mandala. It's a um, color by numbers, paint the town by numbers. And it was actually donated by Donna Hensley um, from Go Craft Box. Uh, but it's kind of, it's an easy way to, to get your art on. Um, you'll see it has like the numbers. So you don't have to be a professional artist to have fun with this. And it ends up being really beautiful. So um, you guys have a chance to win this one. So stay Super tuned. cool. And you guys need to stick around to the end of today's live because Elaine is actually going to help us uh, pull the drawing, uh, the winner for the drawing today. So make sure that you're hanging out. You're letting us know you're here by um, saying hi to Elaine in the comments. If you have questions as we get going, um, you know, Elaine has a really cool demonstration that she's gonna do and some of us are gonna try to follow along with her. Um, so yeah, we want you to stick around for all that and then afterwards she's gonna do the drawing. So that's gonna be really exciting. Um, so let's see. So, okay, Elaine, I, I'm ready. I have, I have to put my little, um, my smock on, but okay. I have the paints. I have got my canvas and I'm, I'm ready to roll. So I am actually going to turn it over to you and see if I hit the right button here. And it's all yours. Okay. We're ready to watch you do your magic. 
Fantastic. So I'm actually going to turn the screen down so you can see my table. Um, in all of these classes that I do, I actually have to paint or draw upside down so you guys have it um, the right way. So uh, just it's a little <laughs> challenging. So forgive me if it doesn't end up being the best painting ever. But this is my workspace right here. So just to show you the supplies that you'll need, and you don't need a lot of stuff. It's nothing fancy. I actually stole watercolors from my kid. So it's just pan watercolors. Um, you'll need a larger brush, so a medium sized brush, and then just a smaller one for details. Um, obviously you need your cup with water. You'll need painter's tape, tissue paper, or toilet paper. Um, you don't need a lot, so don't, don't get too worried about that. You won't have to break into your stash and a paper towel. So the painting that we're going to do is this one right here. And I swear it's super easy. Um, and uh, the first thing that you want to do is get your watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, just uh, thicker paper works fine. Um, you can use cardstock or anything like that. Um, you just don't want to use printer paper for this one because it does get a little wet and it buckles. So what I have done, um, and let me just make sure you guys can see the whole thing. Oh yeah, it looks great. Um, what I've done is I've taped it around the edges just to stop it from buckling. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our mountain with our painter's tape. So because mountains aren't straight across, uh, you want to rip it and... Uh, that ripped edge is where the mountain edge is going to be. So this is going to be a work of art, Elaine. I can tell already. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything where you can rip things apart, right? Yeah. Sounds good. Um, okay. So that is going to be pretty good for me so i've got my little mountain edge right here and you're going to take your watercolor brush and um swish it around make sure it's clean and get a little bit of that water off um but we're going to paint the whole top area right here just with water so just go straight across um and you'll know it's ready when you'll see it kind of shiny uh, you can go up and down. It doesn't really matter which direction you go because it's just water. Just like that. So make sure you have the whole thing covered. Just with water. This is going to be the sky. Um, so we're going to make the sky color just with varying shades of blue. If you have just your kids watercolor and you just have one blue, awesome. Just use that. Um, but we wanna make it darker at the top, getting lighter at the bottom. So go ahead and mix up your watercolor. I'm gonna bring this piece of plastic right here. So this is just where I'm mixing. Uh, and then I'm gonna prepare enough blue so that it covers that whole top area. Darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. So I'm getting um, like three different colors of blue. But this is just your sky. And so starting at the top, you brush it back and forth. Now, since the paper is already wet, it blends pretty well. And this technique is actually called wet on wet because it's a wet paper and you're painting with a wet medium. So as you go lower, you can add a little bit more water just so that you have uh, darker at the top, lighter at the bottom just like this i did purple is that okay purple is fine because purple skies are beautiful okay mine's gonna be okay. a sunset so now i have my whole sky painted in and i'm just going to add a little bit more blue to make it more intense at the top just like that and the reason that I said you guys need toilet paper is we are going to make clouds with our toilet paper. So oh. I'm rinsing out my brush and I'm wiping it on the side and I'm drying off my brush. And I'm just going to pull a little bit of this um, color off right here just so it gets lighter at the bottom. Okay, 
So I'm putting my brush in the water, I'm grabbing my toilet paper and I'm kind of smushing it into a little ball. So um, just like that, there's no right or wrong way to do it. But you're gonna use this toilet paper to create your clouds and make sure when you're doing that, you're using a tapping motion, you're not rubbing because you don't wanna destroy the surface of the paper. And you're gonna create your clouds like that. Ta -da! So you have your full oh sky. Oh my god, that looks yeah. amazing. So, so Karen, Karen Ann just said, this just in, painting upside down. How does she do it? Because <laughs> she's amazing, Karen. She's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting skill to learn. So now <laughs> that I have my sky in, it's basically um, you know a third of the painting's done and we just wanna let it dry. So I'm gonna bring this piece of paper. I'm just gonna wave it like this. So your job, your next task is to just blow on your paper so it dries. And um, while I'm doing this, I can share some of the stuff that the firehouse has been doing. Yes. So I've already is. talked to you about the weekly classes that we're doing and the artist talks and the gallery walkthroughs. Um, something that we're doing actually that is totally new for us is we are going to have a online exhibit um, that is going live on our website this Friday for Second Friday. We've never done an online exhibit before, but um, due to COVID-19, we did have to cancel our art walk. Um, and we were really sad about that because yeah. art walk is such a great celebration for local arts um, that we wanted to do something to highlight our local artists. So we opened up this online exhibit um, to local artists for small works uh, and it's opening this Friday on our website at 6 p.m. And the art show is actually called Artists in Their Residence, um, kind of a play on artist residency because uh, okay. the only residence we're in is our own. So <laughs> I am and going to keep going with this. Now that this is kind of dry, I'm going to peel off my mountain. Um, and just be really careful if you're doing this along with me uh, to make sure that you don't peel off the paper because it could be just a little bit wet on the side right there. Um, but it's just, just be careful. Don't yank it off super uh, fast. It's not like a Band-Aid, so uh, right. it's not better. Okay, so I'm gonna take this little ball of tape and put it up here. Great, so now we have the sky and we have the mountain edge. We're gonna do uh, four layers of mountains. So they're gonna get lighter. Um, it's lighter in the background, gets darker as you go forward. So go ahead and grab your medium brush. Make sure you dry it on the paper towel. I'm gonna put this paper towel here so you guys can see. And um, you are going to, oh, now I'm gonna wet it. But anyway, you're gonna pull up some purples. Uh, so purples, blues, and maybe just a little bit of black. But that first row is gonna be your lightest row. So make sure you add some water and you are going to paint right up to the edge where that blue sky ends. And it's okay if it's really super faint because we're creating um, what we call Hmm? It's it always faint, all right. <laughs> you what? Oh, no, go ahead, Elaine. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so we're creating this, uh, what we call our atmospheric um, perspective. So the things that are further away are lighter. Okay. So now I'm going to do the next one, and I want to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. And we're going to do the second row, but just make sure that you don't follow the same line. So... Maybe do it more like that. Okay. So that's our second row, a little bit darker. And watercolors are a really hard medium. So if you're doing this along with me, um, you know, be gentle with yourself. Uh, watercolors, there's, uh, it's hard to control it with the water, um, but that kind of like, unplanned look is also uh, <laughs> what is the beauty of, of watercolor? Are you experiencing that as well? The unplanned? Oh, okay. I'm experiencing something. <laughs> I'm not sure. Mine is not looking at all like yours, but we're going with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the next level. 
Um, I'm going to add just a little bit more intensity to it. So a little bit more paint. Um, and then I'm going to add that next level. Just like that. And one more to go. And then we can work on the um, land in the front. So last one. And there we go. So you've got four layers of mountains, lightest one in the back, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, and then a little bit darker right in the front. And going back to this, we're gonna wave our magic fan to dry our watercolor. Um, so we're already two thirds of the way done. So as wow. far as an art class, this one's pretty fast. So for those of you guys watching, if you have any questions as we go, um, put them in the comments. I just got, Elaine, I have one from Patty Grove. She says, I need to go make supper, have fun, and congrats on the winner. This has been fun. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. If anybody else has any questions while Elaine is showing us her magic, let us know. Let us know you're here. Oh, okay, so I think it's doing pretty well drying. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the trees right in front. The trees are going to be a little bit different. Um, we are going to get some greens. Uh, so I'm going to do this olive green right here. Oh, my goodness, I'm making a mess. <clears throat> and black. Okay, and instead of having like this very soothing um, kind of rolling line, we're gonna do more jagged lines for here for the tree. You make it look so easy, I love it. <laughs> I did have to practice, this was my practice one. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to try and see if I can teach this in uh, 10 minutes, because. <laughs> and okay. upside down. And upside down. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun. So I um, came to this position basically as an arts educator. So I've been teaching, um, you know, for 10 years, my first class having been at the Firehouse Art Center. Uh, the best part about that class was my 11 year old was in the class um, and it was actually called Preschool Picassos. And um, I'm just adding a little bit of black. So I'm gonna do a little bit of darker line right at the bottom. Uh, yeah, so it was Preschool Picassos and it was basically just a class where they got to like make a big mess and um, mm -hmm. create some art along the way. Um, and now he is like an accomplished artist on his own as an 11 year old. He has like, he, he teaches the kids at school. He does all sorts of different artwork and he plays five different instruments. So I'm super impressed. Oh my him. goodness. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I've been teaching, uh, you know, whether it's with the firehouse or I also was with the Longmont museum and, um, I did a brief stint in California uh, where we moved away, but then we had to move back because we loved Longmont so much. So uh, we love Longmont. The firehouse loves Longmont. Uh, it's just such a great environment. So we're really glad to, to be back and I'm really glad to be back with the firehouse. So I'm just waving this around, getting this dry again. And we're gonna go move in for the ground um, and then we are gonna be done. Oh my so, goodness. The grounds are yellows and browns. So I'm gonna start with this tan color right here. So I always encourage the kids um, in the weekly art classes to send in their art. If there are any adults or kids doing this one, definitely send in your art because um, it's always so fun to see what everyone makes. I love it. Okay. Let us know you guys are here by commenting. Uh, Elaine is going to help us do a prize drawing for one lucky comment. 
So let us know that you guys are here. Okay. Now we have the ground and I'm just gonna, I mean, it's all nature and, and nature is all just random anyway. So I'm just gonna add some browns in there. And however it lays is how it's gonna be. And the last thing I'm gonna do for this right now is I'm gonna add some bright yellow. So that bright yellow right there in like that. Let that brush go back in the water, get my small brush, um, and I'm gonna pull in some darks. And if you can see, you can see it like spread. And that is the joy of watercolor. Like you kind of never know what it's gonna do sometimes if you're working wet on wet, because it just spreads with the watercolor and spreads with the water and that's cool too so I'll throw some greens in there and I feel like I, I was think really well until, until we got, got to the land, land. <laughs> I think it looks great so oh. watercolor paper is that the question did Laura have a question about water? Um, let's see, Laura is water, yes. Um, so Kyle says, I missed the very start of the instructions. Are you using a special paper? Ah, so special Laura, paper. Thank so you, Laura. This, yeah, this is actually watercolor paper. So this is watercolor paper um, cold press and it's 140 pound, um, which sounds like really heavy, uh, but it's, it's not that heavy. It's just like a normal weight of watercolor paper, the standard weight, um, but, you can use any kind of thick paper uh, if you have just cardstock. Um, the taping it down on the sides really helps with the buckling. So if you had a cardstock paper just a little bit thicker than normal paper, um, the taping would really help it from um, buckling it and it'll help it keep its structure. So that looks like it. So just to give you um, an idea of how we put this together. So if you guys missed the, um, the lesson, so we started with, uh, we made the mountains with the tape to get that definition right here. I painted the whole sky with water, just plain old water. I did blue, darker blue from the top, going lighter down to the bottom. I took my toilet paper, smushed it into a ball, and patted it to create the clouds. We did the layers of mountains using lighter colors in the back, two darker colors in the front for um, atmospheric perspective. Uh, added the trees, so two layers, lighter green and then darker green in the front. And then we just did the grounds with varying colors of neutrals and greens and a little bit of black for shadow. So that was my quick 10 minute demonstration for watercolors. Um, I really hope that you guys try it. Uh, we are gonna be back at the firehouse um, opening up May 13th. Uh, and hopefully we're gonna start offering classes, um, well, as soon as it's safe to, to rejoin and have people in um, shared spaces. Uh, yeah. But I'm gonna turn the screen up because that's the end of the class. Um, and I will be able to see you guys. Where's your lovely face? So, <laughs> so I hope you guys try it. Um, watercolor is a hard medium. A lot of people say it's like the most difficult thing just because you have to let go of that control. You never know where the watercolor is going to go. Um, so how did your painting turn out? Oh, uh, well, well, I'll show you later. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't quite come out. I mean, I tried to follow along with you. I don't have watercolor, so I did acrylic, but I watered it down quite a bit. And Fantastic. I was right there with you until we got to about the ground part. And then it it was more of kind of a, a baby poop mustard color that I didn't like. So That's right. It could be fields. It, but it was fun. Yeah, like wheat fields. I could pretend. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it was fun, though. And I um, I used to love to paint and draw. Um, I do come from a an artsy family. My dad draws. My brother is amazing. And um, I'm okay, but I think I, I passed that on to my daughter, who is, she just, 
astonishes me every day with the stuff that she comes up with. So I really appreciate you having, you know, coming on here and showing us and especially painting upside down. I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> I love, that? I love <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so let us know that you guys are here. I do see a few more faces um, popping up there. So um, let's see. Laura Ambler, she says, it's so cool. Thank you for doing this. And um, so Elaine, for you guys watching, now is your chance. Uh, hopefully you were listening at the beginning of our uh, little live stream. So if you're here and you're watching, uh, Elaine is showing the prize today. And what is it again? It's a paint by numbers kit. It is, it's a paint by ta uh, paint the town by numbers. So it's a mandala painting. Um, you get one paint canvas, 12 paint colors and a brush. So it all comes in there in the kit. Um, and it has all the numbers labeled and it's kind of like a, you know, a more mature paint by numbers, um, but it's good for adults. It's good for kids. So kind of yeah. a good stress reliever, right? I mean, kind of just to sit down and, and play with colors. How fun is that? Yes. Right. Okay. So Elaine, I'm struggling. Um, some people came on late, so maybe we should, instead of taking something that we talked about right at the very beginning of our live stream, um, what if we said, okay, so our question should be, what medium did Elaine use in her painting today? Her demonstration she just did. What was the medium that she used? First one to put it in the comments is our winner. I'm going to let Elaine watch for it. Can you see? I can. I can see. So okay, I see so I one comment. Who do you see, Elaine? Well, Arpita's saying hi. Hi, Arpita. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's one of our board members so oh very I cool <laughs> okay so i see um one person has come in with the correct answer do you see her as well elaine um let me see scroll down kyle yes oh yes wet on wet he even um had the technique so that's fantastic right so yay congrats kyle you are today's winner of the paint by numbers um kit that elaine is donating today um so email me as soon as this broadcast or, or live stream broadcast uh, as soon as this is done at jwanasek um at longmontchamber.org and i will coordinate getting that kit over to you okay kyle so congrats um thanks everybody for for showing up and and watching us today and i want to give a special shout out and thank you to you elaine uh, for taking your time out showing your amazing talent uh, with the Longmont community. And we want everybody to go over, visit your website, see what's happening over there. Uh, it sounds like you have some fun stuff coming up on Friday. We'll try and put those in the comments, that link as well. Um, if I don't, can you do that as well, Elaine, just in case yes, I miss yes, it? I can. Um, um, and then can I just do one more uh, yeah. shout out for Giving Tuesday? So obviously, um, Firehouse Art Center is a small nonprofit art gallery. We are participating in Giving Tuesday now. And, um, you know, if it is a possibility for you, we would love your support at this time, especially after being closed for two months um, and then having to cancel Art Walk, which makes us very sad. Um, no. But we appreciate uh, Longmont as a community for supporting us and um, all of our donors and uh, just basically... We miss everyone and we can't wait to be back. That's awesome. And yeah, for those of you guys who missed the very beginning, today is Giving Tuesday. So get over there and, and give where you can. Say a special love, send some special love over to the Firehouse Art Center. Thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you, Thank you Jessica. Have a, bye. Have a good your day. Bye bye. Bye. What a ama she's amazing. I, I struggled to do it um, right side up. So I am really impressed that she did her watercolor upside down, which which is, is truly an art form that I wish I had. Um, I wanted to give you guys a, a quick reminder because today is Giving Tuesday. Um, we did last week we launched a food drive for the Mountain States Children's Home. Uh, for those of you guys who may not have, have tuned in for that. <clears throat> you can still donate your food items. Um, they are collecting items at four different locations as well as the thrift store uh, on, I think it was 8th and Kaufman, but we will get those in the comments as well. Um, you can donate those through Thursday of this week. So we are really working hard to try and fill uh, the food pantry over there at Mountain States 
children's home. So make sure if you have some extra items in your pantry or if you're going to the store, load up on a few extras um, and, and help fill that food pantry for those kiddos over there. Um, like I said, go see Elaine over at uh, firehouseart.org. Um, she has some amazing classes and things that she just shared with us. So make sure you stop by there. If you want to see the list of businesses that we are featuring every day at 4 p.m. here, go to uh, the website of the chamber, which is um, longmontchamber.org forward slash Longmont is open. Uh, and also, I want you guys to come back. Tune in right here, 4 p.m. at the chamber Facebook page for um, the next I guess, edition uh, of We Shop Wednesdays. So come back here tomorrow. We'll see you. And in the meantime, be well, take care of yourself, and, and we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.